Hello everyone. In the early period of embryogenesis, the primitive gut develops in close association with the peritoneum, the serous membrane. So understanding the complexity of the relationship between the abdominal cavity and its organs with the peritoneum, it has been proven that the peritoneum has an array of functions like it behaves as a physiological protective barrier for the abdominal cavity and also selective absorption of the fluid across the membrane. It modulates the immune mechanism, tissue repair, scarring and also it prevents the additions and the dissemination of the tumor cells. So in this video and the upcoming videos, we will be seeing in detail about the gross anatomy of the peritoneum. First, let us talk about the subdivisions of the trunk. The trunk of the human body is divided into an upper thoracic cavity and the lower abdominal pelvic cavity divided by the intervening diaphragm. Thoracic cavity is conical in shape and it is covered by the ribs, sternum and the vertebra. The abdominal pelvic cavity is again divided into two parts. It has an upper part called as abdominal proper and the lower part called as pelvic cavity and they are divided by the plane of the pelvic inlet. The boundaries of the abdomen are it has a roof, floor, anterior wall and the posterior wall. The roof is formed by the diaphragm which separates it from the thoracic cavity. The floor is formed by the pelvic and the urogenital diaphragm that separates the abdominal pelvic cavity from the underlying perineum. The anterior wall is musculofibrous in nature and the posterior wall is osseo musculofacial in nature. The anterior or the anterolateral abdominal wall is musculofibrous in nature that means it is formed by the muscles like external oblique, internal oblique, transverse abdominus muscle and the rectus abdominus muscle with its aponeurosis. Similarly the posterior wall is osseo musculofacial in nature that means it is bounded by the vertebra, the muscles and their aponeurotic part. So this anterior abdominal wall, posterior abdominal wall, roof and floor are bounding the abdominal cavity that means it encloses the abdominal cavity. In this video we are going to study in detail about peritoneum, the layers of peritoneum, peritoneal cavity, the peritoneal fluid present within the peritoneal cavity, the organs related to the peritoneum and the peritoneal folds. First let's talk about peritoneum. So what is peritoneum? It is nothing but a serous sac. This peritoneum is a serous sac lined by the serous membrane. This serous sac lines the inner aspect of the abdominal wall. That means this sac is present within the abdominal cavity. There are other serous sacs in our body. Those are nothing but the two pleural sacs and the pericardial sac present in the thoracic cavity. In abdomen we have the largest serous sac of our body that is only called as the peritoneum. So it is present within the abdominal cavity. This serous sac is lined by the serous membrane which is fibroelastic tissue and this membrane, this uh, lining serous membrane is only called as the mesothelium. This mesothelium is nothing but a single layer of squamous cells resting on the basement membrane. So it is nothing but the simple squamous epithelium resting on the basement membrane. So this lining part of the peritoneum, the serous membrane is otherwise called as the mesothelium. So this peritoneal membrane, serous membrane lines the inner part, inner surface of the abdominal pelvic cavity. Layers of peritoneum. Initially the serous sac is having a single part. Uh, it is actually a serous membrane which is enclosing the sac. But later on Due to the development of the growing organs, enlarging organs, it happens to form two layers. So the two layers of the peritoneum are the parietal peritoneum and the visceral peritoneum. The layer of peritoneum which lines the inner aspect of the abdominal wall will become the outer layer and it is called as the parietal peritoneum. The layer of the peritoneum when it covers the viscera due to its development it forms the inner layer of the peritoneum called as the visceral peritoneum. Let's see how this 
layers of peritoneum are formed. Considering this inflated balloon to be analogous to the serous sac or the peritoneal sac and the fist compared to the developing organ. When this inflated balloon is being pushed by the fist, what happens? The fist tries to indent the balloon. So when it deeply pushes, it deeply indents and it seems as though the fist is present inside the balloon but actually it is not present inside, it is present outside only but it will be covered by a layer of the balloon okay so in this way only when this serous sac that is the peritoneal sac is being indented by the developing organ in the fetal life what happens it tries to push the serous sac forward from the posterior aspect to the anterior aspect it tries to push so it indents the serous sac so when it deeply indents the peritoneal serous membrane will try will try to cover the viscera and also it hangs the viscera. So thereby the two layers of the peritoneum are formed. So due to the indentation of the developing organs, the layers of peritoneum are formed. The part of the layer of peritoneum which covers the inner aspect of the abdominal wall now will become the outer layer and it is called as a parietal layer. And the part of the peritoneum which covers the viscera due to the indentation of the viscera will become the inner layer of peritoneum and it is called as the visceral layer of peritoneum and a part of the peritoneum which suspends or holds that organ is called as the peritoneal fold. This peritoneal fold transmits the blood vessels and the nerves to supply the uh, covering organ and the cavity which is present intervening between the parietal and the visceral layer only is called as the peritoneal cavity. Now this parietal peritoneum embryologically it is developed from the somatopleuric layer of the lateral plate mesoderm. Parietal peritoneum covers the parietes that means it covers the inner aspect of the abdominal wall. So it will be supplied by the same nerves and vessels supplying the abdominal wall. So it is supplied by the somatic nerves and somatic vessels. This parietal peritoneum is pain sensitive. That means when this peritoneum is being infected by any of the pathology of the abdomen, we will feel pain. So that means the parietal peritoneum is pain sensitive since it is supplied by the somatic nerves and somatic vessels. But the visceral peritoneum is developed from the splanchnopleuric layer of the lateral plate mesoderm. Since it covers the viscera, it will be supplied by the autonomic nerves. That is uh, the one which is supplying the viscera, the visceral nerves and visceral vessels are all only going to supply the visceral peritoneum. Since it is the autonomic nerves, we are the visceral peritoneum when it is infected, we will not be able to feel the pain. So it is pain insensitive. Peritoneal fluid. Earlier we saw mesothelium. The main function of the mesothelium is nothing but to secrete the peritoneal fluid. So the lining epithelium of the peritoneum sac that is a serous sac is a mesothelium secretes the peritoneal fluid. How it secretes? It absorbs the fluid from the sub mesothelial vessels, the vessels which are present underneath the mesothelium. It absorbs the fluid from those vessels and also from the sub peritoneal connective tissue. The interstitial fluid from the subperitoneal connective tissue is being absorbed by the mesothelium and this fluid only will be secreted by the mesothelial cells into the peritoneal cavity and this fluid is called as the peritoneal fluid which will be equal it, which will be same like that of the plasma of the blood vessel so it contains the protein electrolytes the other features like neutrophils macrophages eosinophils lymphocytes and also the desquamated mesothelial cells the amount will be equal to about 50 ml in the human beings. If this amount increases, then it, that condition is called as ascites. We will see later what is ascites and how it is caused. So normally the amount is 50 ml in the human beings. So what is the function of this peritoneal fluid? This helps to prevent the friction when the two layers of the peritoneum are sliding against each other. Both are actually very close to each other. The serous sac will be actually the potential space 
uh, within the serous sac will be reduced due to the developing organs. So what happens? The visceral peritoneum and the parietal peritoneum will be very close to each other. So it has to slide against each other. There will be intervening peritoneal fluid which will avoid friction when it is moving. Also it helps to prevent friction when and pro provides the smooth movement of the abdominopelvic organs. So these are the functions of the peritoneal fluid. So peritoneal organs, how the organs are related to the peritoneum that is what we are going to see. No organ is present inside the peritoneum. The organ when it is fully covered by the peritoneal layer then it is called as the intraperitoneal organ. Okay, And it will be suspended by the peritoneal fold which transmits the vessels and nerves. Retroperitoneal organs are nothing but the organs which are not covered by the peritoneal um, layer and it is fixed and immobile mostly it is present in the posterior abdominal wall. Partially covered organs are part, uh, part of the organ will be covered by the peritoneum not fully so they are partially covered. There is a term called a subperitoneal organ. Subperitoneal organ happens to occur. How? Because Earlier I was telling about the abdomen proper and the pelvic cavity. Those are the two parts of the abdominal pelvic cavity, you know. So this uh, serous sac or the peritoneum actually lines the entire abdominal proper. But it will not cover the entire pelvic cavity. Instead it will be covering only the upper part of the peritoneal cavity. You can see the second picture where it is not covering the pelvic cavity. The upper part of the pelvic cavity itself it will end. So the organs which are present in the pelvic cavity will become subperitoneal. That is it will be present beneath the peritoneal sac. So those organs are only called as the subperitoneal organs. Now we have to know about a term called as zygosis. See this picture. In this picture we are able to understand that an organ is fully covered by the peritoneum and it has been uh, suspended by the peritoneal fold. So this is an intraperitoneal organ. How a retroperitoneal organ is formed? All the organs will be actually trying to indent the uh, peritoneal sac but later on it becomes retroperitoneal in the developing life. So this occurs by a process called as zygosis. So zygosis is nothing but a process of absorption of one layer of the peritoneal fold. See the peritoneal fold is having two layers that is very obviously seen in the picture. So one layer of the peritoneal fold will be actually uh, being fused with the parietal peritoneum. So in the second picture we are able to see the fusion of one layer of the peritoneal fold with the parietal peritoneum. So this fused part of these two structures what happens? it will be observed later on and now the organ uh, which is which has been actually enclosed by the peritoneum will no more covered by the peritoneum and it becomes an retroperitoneal organ that means it is it is present outside the peritoneum so the organs which are present outside the peritoneal cavity will become fixed and immobile mostly they are present in the posterior abdominal wall and in the third picture it denotes the retroperitoneal organ so it is not covered by the peritoneum. So those are only retroperitoneal organs. We will see what are the organs which will be intraperitoneal, retroperitoneal or other ways. The intraperitoneal organs are nothing but the stomach, jejunum, ileum, transverse colon, cecum, appendix. Partially covered organs are the one which uh, partly it is covered by peritoneum, not fully. So those are ascending colon, descending colon, rectum. See rectum is present in the pelvic cavity but part of it is present in the abdominal cavity also. So when it is present in the abdominal cavity the anterior wall will be covered by the peritoneum so it becomes a partially covered organ. Retroperitoneal organs are present in the posterior abdominal wall those are duodenum, pancreas, kidney, ureter, suprarenal glands. Subperitoneal organs are present in the pelvic cavity those are urinary bladder, prostrate, seminal vesicle, uterus and these are these comes under subperitoneal organs. So how these organs are formed we will see later on when we study about the peritoneal cavity, greater sac, lesser sac and their various peritoneal tracings. So we will understand it in a better way when we study those things. 
functions of the peritoneum earlier we saw the peritoneal fluid helps in the free movement frictionless movement of the viscera and also the layers of the peritoneum so it helps in free movement of viscera without friction and through the peritoneal fold it suspends the organs and maintains its position between the organs the peritoneum forms ligaments the peritoneal folds forms the ligaments so through the ligaments it connects the organs and helps to keep it in position some part of the peritoneum has the macrophages and the antimicrobial uh, agents so those will protect uh, any infection which happens in the abdomen and also it helps to prevent the spread of the infection a part of the peritoneal fold called as the greater omentum contains a great amount of fat so it through this uh, through this it helps to store fat so storage of fat is also a function of peritoneum through the mesothelium it helps to absorb the fluid excess fluid which is been present in the abdominal cavity so in that way also it helps the peritoneum functions so these are some of the most common functions of the peritoneum lastly to summarize a peritoneum is nothing but a serous sac which is lined by the serous membrane that membrane is only called as the mesothelium which secretes the peritoneal fluid the parts of the peritoneum are two layers of the peritoneum which are parietal peritoneum lining the inner surface of the abdomen or abdominal wall and the visceral peritoneum which covers the outer aspect of the viscera the peritoneal cavity is the part which is intervening between the parietal and the visceral peritoneum it contains the peritoneal fluid the part of the peritoneum which suspends the organs the intraperitoneal organs are only called as the peritoneal fold peritoneal folds may be also in the form of ligaments when it connects two organs so these are some of the general features of the peritoneum thank you